It's business as usual at the Ethelin Mill at St Dogmills. The miller goes about his work, milling the flour, sifting and packaging it, ready for sale in the local area. There is also freshly baked bread and free-range eggs on offer. This has been going on at the very same spot by the old abbey for centuries, as a local historian explains. So there's probably been a mill here at the very least from the 12th century and possibly going back even further than that. So in the abbey they would have had a mill in their community? There were two mills which were immediately adjacent to the abbey. Uh, there was the mill on the present site which was a, a grist mill for grinding corn and then there was a second mill which we think was on the site now occupied by a house called Abbey Forge and that was a fulling mill for the production of woolen cloth. So both mills uh, would have serviced the abbey and the wider community. And the mill that's up and running now, do you know anything about the history of, of, of this mill? Well there would have been a mill on that site from the Middle Ages. Um, it was rebuilt in the 1640s, so the present mill is, is probably a, a largely 19th century, but incorporating parts of a, a much older building. When Mike and Jane Hall bought the mill and the nearby land in 1979, there was planning permission to build two bungalows on the mill pond itself. But luckily, for some dog miles, and for the preservation of an important part of history, Mike had other ideas. So we set to with a will, decided to restore it. So we dug out the mill pond, discovered the walls, dug out the tail race where the water flows away, which had disappeared as well. But luckily we bought all the land that went with the mill, so we had what we needed. So we did a lot of piping and put everything back to rights again. Although dilapidated, much of the mill was intact. All the walls, doors and floors were original, but could be salvaged. A local carpenter did the necessary restoration work to high standard. The machinery, which dates from the 1820s, was also restored. Mike's skills as an engineer certainly came in very handy. The challenges, I suppose, mainly was getting the water sorted out. That did take some time to get to understand it and also to learn how to mill. The mill wheel was in poor condition, but fortunately an identical one was found in an other mill in Pembrokeshire. The replacement wheel is a carbon copy of the original. Oh, it's fantastic. A br brilliant piece of work. The majority of the machinery inside is original, uh, but what's been restored has been very, very accurately done. I was keen to find out what actually happens in the milling process. Well, once I release the water, that drops onto the water wheel, which then begins to turn. As soon as it's turning, it then begins to turn the pit wheel, which is the big wheel inside the mill. That then drives a wheel called the wallower, which then drives the wheel above that, which is called the great spur wheel. And linked to that is one millstone. There are three pairs of stones, but only one at a time can be used. So it's linked to one of the stones, which I choose which one I want to use mills the flour and throws it down a chute. I also have a drive for the sack hoist, which is a slack chain drive. So you tie on a sack and you go upstairs and press down the lever, which engages it onto the, onto the pulley on the main axle, which then 
pulls the sacks up. And then also I can sieve the flour. We have a, a thing called a flour grader, make white flour, semolina and bran, all of which we do. I was interested in finding out about maintenance work that needs to be carried out. So I spoke to William Martin, a local carpenter, who has been working with Mike for the last seven years. Uh, right, so I do the maintenance here in the mill and today I'm working on the flower grazer behind me uh, to try and make that more user friendly. Uh, you have to go around and lubricate all the bearings, especially the outside bearing by the water wheel because the, uh, the water runs over that bearing. Uh, the gears downstairs, they are thought to be about 200 years old but they have wooden teeth and they tend to need replacing every 5-10 to 10 years but you just hammer them out and put a new oak tooth in and then you have to individually shape each tooth uh, so that it meshes with the gears properly. Okay, so these stones have just been dressed and you uh, lift the top stone up and turn it over and then you dress the stone which means that you have to flatten off the surface of the stone and recut the grooves and the real skill in doing this is uh, taking off the minimum amount of stone that you uh, have to take off to get a decent finish on the stone. So traditionally you would have used uh, this tool which is a metal chisel in a mallet type thing and you would have chipped away and recut the grooves uh, and flattened off the stone with this. But we have a local uh, stonemason and stone carver who comes in with his uh, kit and does it for us instead now. Mike has obviously done an impressive job in restoring the old mill with its significance for local history. You know, I've said how commonplace mills were, you know, they're more common than parish churches, but of course in this day and age, um, it, it's a very different story. I may be wrong in this, but I think it's the only uh, working corn grist mill of its type in Wales, with an overshot wheel, and, um, uh, and yet the, the, the type that this mill is would at one time have been one of the most common uh, mill types. So it, it's a really valuable um, piece of, of living history and uh, you know, I, I, I hope it carries on working for, for many, many generations to come. <laughs>